Hello there, as you all know we've been working our way through 1 Corinthians. We're now into chapter 3. I'm really just going to deal with a principle at the beginning of chapter 3, but let me just read to you the first four verses, if I may, by way of introduction. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet, now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? I will leave a reading there. Paul is in this section of First Corinthians uh, going to deal with the divisions and the causes behind those divisions in the local church in Corinth. He's writing to Christians. He addresses them as brethren. He says, I would like to speak to you as people who were spiritual. And let's remember that we have learned from chapter 2 that every Christian is spiritual. It's not just good Christians or super Christians that are spiritual, but every Christian is defined as spiritual. But not every Christian will learn from this chapter walks the walk or talks the talk of a Christian. Some people are still behaving as if they were not Christians. And this is where we need to distinguish and think about the idea of this expression carnal, this word carnal. Paul says, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Now that word at its simplest level means fleshly, of the flesh. And there are three things that that could mean. That could mean, just quite simply, physical. It doesn't in this verse, but it could. If you go back and have a look at different references that talk about, uh, or use this word, you would notice that when it's used about the Lord Jesus in Romans chapter 1 verse 3, it says, Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. That is purely physical. The Lord Jesus had no sin. That is very, very clear from other passages of Scripture. This is not talking about his nature. This is talking about the fact that he was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Other verses will tell us apart from sin. Other verses will tell us in him was no sin. He did no sin and all that type of thing. You read through the different references then uh, concerning the Lord Jesus. It says in Acts chapter 2 verse 30, Therefore being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. So there, there is in this a very simple description of what is physical. He took a body. He came into this world. Now the second thing that you could take from that is natural. As in, it is the normal, natural way for the human being to operate and to think. Uh, look at the Lord Jesus speaking to the people around about him. In John 8, verse 15, he says, You judge after the flesh. You judge at a natural level. But he says, I judge no man. The Lord Jesus is describing to them the way they function. They think at a very natural level. Romans chapter 4 uh, talks about Abraham and what it says in verse 1 of Romans 4. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham was justified by works he hath went off to glory but not before God. What he's saying is at a natural level he found that he could do things but those things weren't sufficient to make him approved or accepted by God. So that's the second way. First way is physical. Then is the natural man the way the man thinks by nature, it's as opposed to what is spiritual, what is of God. And of course, the third one is used in the sense of being totally base, totally evil and wrong. Um, if you look at Romans chapter 7, verse 5, it says, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death, that which is sinful. Now, in our passage, Paul is really describing... Christians who should have been acting spiritually as acting carnally in a fleshly way, that which was associated not only to nature, 
but to the depraved nature, to sin itself. And he says to them, there are three things that it does. Three things that the carnal, fleshly way of thinking, three results of that in the life of a believer. Number one, there is an increased conflict, an increased conflict in the life of the believer. Let me just take you to a verse in Galatians and to chapter 5 and verse number 17. Galatians 5 and 17. It says in that chapter, let me just get the verse for you here. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So there is a, const a conflict, a consistent and increasing conflict, between what is fleshly and evil, and what is spiritual and of God. Now you read Romans chapter 7, and it will tell you about that conflict in the life of the believer. And it will tell you that there's a repeated defeat in the life of a believer when he acts according to the flesh. The third thing we get, so if there's an increasing conflict, a consistent conflict, a repeated defeat, there's a protracted infancy. Now we can see it in this here. He says, I would like to speak to you as mature people, but I have to speak to you as babies, even as unto babes in Christ. So these Christians were acting as baby Christians. So there is a level of maturity when you're saved that is very immature, it's infantile, it's it's just a baby. But as you grow, God expects maturity. Now the same thing is, is uh, said for us when you come to Hebrews. And in, in Hebrews, it, it, it tells us in Hebrews chapter 5, just again get to the reference there, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 11, it says this, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as need have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby, but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. So what he's saying here is that a Christian who still acts fleshly, according to their base nature, according to the flesh, is a baby in spiritual maturity or with a lack of spiritual maturity. In fact, it goes on in the end of Hebrews 5, 14 to say that they have, those who are of full age, because of consistent use of their spiritual senses, they are able to discern between good and evil. So that actually brings us to the fourth point, not only increasing conflict, not only repeated defeat, not only protracted infancy, but restricted discernment, the inability to discern good from evil. Come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and the apostle says, I'd like to speak to you as to those who are spiritual, but actually I need to talk to you as babies because you're acting according to what you were before you were saved. You're still behaving according to the carnal nature, the fleshly nature. He said, I fed you with milk, not with meat, because you couldn't take strong meat. So you're still with milk, and you're not able to bear it now. And he says, the evidence in verse 3 is, you are yet carnal, fleshly, for there is envying and strife and division and he says, you're walking as men do naturally. You're walking according to the natural way of thinking of mankind. Because he says, one says, I'm of Paul. Another, I'm of Paulus. He says, is that not the evidence that you're acting according to an old nature, a depraved nature? Now, as we come back to this next week, we will develop this idea. He goes on to talk about there are things that God has done and way that God approves for behaviour to take place that is for the good and the blessing and the development of God's people. But I trust that we might just pick up this lesson that is the possibility of us behaving as if we were not saved people, behaving in a fleshly way as opposed to behaving in a way that is reflecting that new life, that spiritual life, that divine life that we got at salvation. Thanks so much again for watching this week.